I-M-A-G-I-N-E, excruciating tooth pain, no dentist, no anesthesia, just primitive stone tools, and raw courage. Now picture a sharp flint tip, slowly boring into a living tooth. 130,000 years ago, feel the rough hands holding you down. Taste the bitter herb paste, meant to numb the pain, barely working. Hear the scrape of stone against enamel, the wet crunch as it breaks through to infected pulp. Your mouth floods with the metallic warmth of blood. Every muscle in your body tenses against unbearable pain. Welcome to Stone Age Dentistry, where a toothache could kill you, and the cure might be just as terrifying as the disease. For millions of years, our ancient ancestors actually had surprisingly good teeth. Their diet, meat, nuts, fibrous plants, kept them relatively clean. But then, everything changed. Around 10,000 years ago, humans began farming. Soft, starchy foods, bread, grains, porridge, stuck to their teeth. Bacteria feasted on them, and decay followed. Suddenly, toothaches weren't rare anymore. They were everywhere, and at desperate attempts to stop the pain. They've been frozen in time, inside ancient teeth, scattered across the earth. Tiny time capsules, whispering stories of pain and survival. Scientists discovered something shocking. Hunter Gadaras had far fewer cavities. Only 1 to 5% of their teeth showed damage. But once humans settled became farmers, cavity rates exploded. 10 to 85%. Despite all our modern tools, toothpaste, floss, dentists, our teeth are often worse than those of our prehistoric ancestors. Why? Because they had something we've lost. A mouth full of good bacteria. Ancient mouths had diverse, protective microbes. We're losing a battle our ancestors won, without any tools at all. Modern mouths, overrun by decay-causing bacteria that love sugar, even with all our brushes and our INSES. And when pain struck, it wasn't just uncomfortable, it was survival. A bad tooth meant you couldn't eat, couldn't hunt, couldn't sleep, used over a million years ago, and yet, they found a way. The first dental tool wasn't metal, it was a stick, a simple toothpick, made of wood or bone, used to pry food from teeth. But things got worse, and so did the pain. In Pakistan, archaeologists discovered something remarkable. 9,000 years ago, someone drilled into a tooth with a stone-tipped bow drill, no anesthesia, just a minute of raw agony, stone grinding against nerve. Screams echoing through the ancient air. The holes were precise, just one or two millimeters, not random. These people knew what they were doing, but the tools, they're only half the horror of a flint drill inside your living tooth. Imagine being the patient. No numbing, no sterilization, just the cold terror. In Croatia, 130,000 years ago, they found grooves in M-O-L-R-S, signs of toothpicks of hands trying to ease the pain. After drilling came a new problem. What do you fill the hole with? In Italy, 13,000 years ago, they found a tooth filled with something strange, a black tar-like resin mixed with hair and fibers. In Slovenia, a 6,500-year-old tooth was packed with beeswax, warm and soft when applied, but it hardened at body temperature, sealing the wound tight. B-E-E-S-W-A-X anti Durable dot. They were sealing cavities before we even knew what bacteria were. Other civilizations used resins, even plant fibers and minerals. They understood stop food from getting in, or the decay would return. But then something even stranger was discovered. Our ancestors didn't just fix their teeth; they damaged them on purpose. They used them like tools. Their teeth held leather, stripped bark, pulled fibers for ropes and bought children's teeth, worn down early from daily use. Teeth weren't just for eating, they were clamps, pliers, even hammers. And this constant use wore them flat. Sometimes, worn teeth didn't even get cavities. No crevices left to hide bacteria. Not all dental care was about pain. Some of it was prevention, even without brushes. They cleaned their teeth, they used chew sticks twigs from special trees, trees that had antiseptic oils that killed bacteria. Salvadora persica, the toothbrush tree, its oils scrubbed the teeth, its fibers polished them gently. Others used charcoal to remove stains, to scrub plaque, bone toothpicks shaped perfectly to reach between teeth. 
These weren't wild guesses. They were deliberate, tested, clever choices. And then we look closer at the roots of all this and find something even deeper. Stone Age dentistry tells us something amazing. Even in the most brutal conditions, humans fought pain with intelligence. They didn't just suffer, they solved. They studied, experimented, adapt, even without modern tools. They had an understanding of dental anatomy. They drilled with purpose, they cleaned with care. They filled with what nature gave them. And here's the twist. Despite our comfy chairs, bright lights, and electric brushes, our teeth are still in worse shape. Our diet, full of sugar and processed foods, has created an oral battlefield, and we're losing. Research from the Australian Centre for Ancient DNA shows, as soon as farming began, bacterial diversity in the mouth began to fall, and it's still falling, through the age of machines, and snacks. Some scientists now ask, Dot, can we fix this? Can we bring back the lost bacteria that once protected our mouths? Could the future of dental care lie in our prehistoric past? Maybe. But one thing is certain. The next time you recline in that dentist's chair, with numbing gel and soft music, spare a thought for the ancient soul, clutching a rock, grinding into their own tooth, hoping, somehow, to end the pain, and unknowingly, shaping the future of dentistry.